everyone, I'm Sarah with the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio. Welcome to our Tie-Dye 101 series. In the next few videos, I'll first share with you all the basics you'll need to know about tie-dye, and then we'll move on to several techniques that you can use to create your own one-of-a-kind custom clothing, accessories, and even home decor. So stay tuned to find out all the basics you'll need to know to become a master of tie-dye. In this intro tutorial, I'll show you tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and some basic information that will help you get the best results possible every time you tie-dye. So before you start any project though, the first thing you'll wanna do is pre-wash the fabric that you'll be using. This ensures that your fabric will be free of any residue that may be left from the factory or shipping process. And whenever you're trying to choose which fabric that you'll use for your project, just keep in mind that natural fabrics like cotton, linen, wool, or silk work best. Try to avoid um, synthetic fabrics like acrylic, rayon, and polyester. You can dye the fabric either wet or dry, but the dye soaks in and spreads a little better when you're working with damp fabric. Tie-dyeing is very messy. Protecting your clothing, skin, and workspace is crucial. Start by covering your work surface with a plastic sheet. This could be a plastic tablecloth, plastic wrap, a drop cloth, or even a trash bag. For most techniques, you'll want your fabric to be raised off the table so the dye can drip all the way through and off of the fabric. An easy way to do this is to place a cooling rack in the center of the plastic. I recommend laying down a few paper towels under the rack to catch the excess dye as it drips. It's also a good idea to wear an apron so you don't get dye on your clothes. And don't forget to put on plastic or latex gloves. The dye will temporarily stain your skin if it comes into contact with it. Always prepare your dye according to the package directions. Each brand varies just a little. The dye that I'm using today comes in pre-portioned amounts in these cool little color-coded squeeze bottles. All I need to do is add water, shake to mix, and I'm ready to go. So when you're tie-dyeing, you'll probably want to use several colors together, but here are a few color combinations you might want to avoid. Orange and green, green and purple, purple and orange. These generally end up making a muddy brown color, which might not be a color you were expecting in your design. Depending on the project that you're working on, you may have the option to use either zip ties or rubber bands to hold your fabric in place while you're dyeing. Zip ties can be pulled tighter than rubber bands, which may give you crisper lines within your project, but rubber bands are generally easier to use. Here are a few good examples though of when you might want to use zip ties. If you're creating a design within your project, as shown on our heart t-shirt tutorial, if you're working on a thicker fabric project, such as a canvas bag like this one, or if you're working with a larger item like a curtain or a pillowcase. There may be times when you need a guide to make your pattern even or if you're creating a shape. So you can use a disappearing ink pen like this one to make the lines or the marks that you need. Simply draw on your fabric and then follow the guidelines as you scrunch and fold the fabric. The ink will disappear as soon as you wash and rinse out your fabric. So how great is that? There are tons of different looks that you can achieve with tie-dye. If you want more white between colored sections of your design, like this t-shirt, apply the dye only to the top folds of the fabric. You should see areas of undyed fabric when you look into the folds. If you want less white between each colored section, like this one here, use the tip of the bottle to get the dye deeper into the folds of the fabric. You shouldn't see much white at all when you look between the folds. You don't have to use too much dye, just make sure it's soaking through to the middle of your bundle. If you notice the dye pooling in between the folds and really dripping a lot, you may have added too much dye. So here's an example of a shirt where I used an excessive amount of dye. You see how the colors begin to turn brown where they overlap and the center of the spiral isn't very well defined. So if I had just used a little less dye, my colors would have turned out more true. 
When you're finished applying your dye, carefully wrap your project in plastic. If you have a tied or banded bundle of fabric, like this t-shirt, gently pick it up and wrap the whole thing in plastic. If your fabric isn't banded or bundled up, like this scrunched scarf, don't disturb the placement of the fabric by moving the piece. Simply drape a piece of plastic over the top. Once you've wrapped your project, let it sit for six to eight hours, or whatever the recommended time is for the dye that you are using. Now that your project has finished resting, let's get ready for the reveal. With the rubber bands or zip ties still in place, rinse the fabric thoroughly under running water until the water runs clear. Finally, remove the rubber bands and take a look at how you did. Machine wash your finished piece by itself on the hottest setting your fabric can take. It's important not to wash this first time with any other laundry because some of the dye will wash out. The heat will help set the dye, allowing you to wash it normally next time. Well, there you have it. Now you're prepared to take on the fun and exciting world of tie-dye. And be sure to check out our other tie-dye video tutorials to learn how to make a spiral t-shirt, a scrunched ombre scarf, a striped drip pillowcase, and even a heart t-shirt. We'll see you next time, everyone.